So childhood is supposed to be happy and carefree, but there will always be disappointment as this kid discovered. I scream, Miss Winkle. Oh yeah, we've all been there. Uh, to discuss resilience in our children, we are joined today by psychologist Sarah Chatwin and parenting advisor John Cowan. Morning, guys. Good, Good morning, morning Mel. Uh, first up, John, uh, what sort of experiences do we need to prepare our children for? Sometimes getting bumped by their friends, sometimes not making it into a team, sometimes uh, not having their work honoured in the way that their friends at work's been honoured. All sorts of little things can... Just uh, fry your heart a little bit, but uh, that's part of life. It does. That honour thing's very interesting that you say mm. that too, like their friends could get money sometimes for good yeah. reports. You don't give them money. It's a big sort of mm. cauldron of things to think yeah. about, isn't it? Um, Sarah, what if they get a bad exam result? I mean, what should you do about that? Well, I think that sometimes you've got to work out whether they've given of their best and they've just got a, a bad exam result because perhaps they didn't know the content or their study techniques weren't very good, or you, you've got to establish why. Now, here's the difference between a child with resilience and a child without resilience. The resilient child will want to find out, you know, why and how they got that mark, and they'll want to move forward. Because for some children, and for most of us, and we'd like it to be this way, it's less about the fall or the failure and more about moving forward and not making the same mistakes. Mm. So I'm not sure whether bad exam results are necessarily a bad thing if the child learns how to go forward mm. positively. And it depends if the bad exam result, result is from the fact that they haven't done any study right. and they've just tried That's to wing right. it or if they've done their absolute best and yeah. they just aren't very good at that subject. Regardless of that, they're not going to learn anything from that experience if they don't actually get past the pain that they're feeling. And that's the thing about resilience. And when you're sympathetic with your child, which I think is a first step, you sympathise with them and you say, you know, you're feeling the pain. The thing is you can move past the pain. Mm. And then you can get into this other stuff about learning from the experience. But yeah. if you're just saying, harden up, toughen up, life's tough, uh, yeah. then... Suck it up, pussy uh, cat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pa parents say, you know, how do we make our kids more resilient? And I think it does come from parents. It comes from a supportive environment mm. where children are allowed to talk about things, where they're not judged, where they're not told off because they come in and say, boy, I didn't do very well in that exam, and parents pounce on them. They're not going to be resilient. In fact, they're probably going to withdraw. But if they feel mm. they can talk about things and, and learn how to get past that failure, then I think that promotes resilience and, and moving forward and moving on. So what do we say then? Say our child comes in, for mm. example, their bad exam says, oh, I did really bad in my English exam. What should we be saying as a parent? I think the first thing mm. is to have an appropriate empathy and a sympathy with them before you get onto the debriefing, because otherwise, if you come on, well, of course you're going to get a result like that if you stay up all night playing on your <laughs> yeah. PlayStation. And sometimes that's the first thing that wants to come out that's of your right. mouth. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, they're not going to hear anything else that mm -hmm. you say, but first of all, showing that you're on side with them, even if you're wanting to give them a bit of a lecture, you, maybe you will get the chance to do the lecture, but only if you then show that you're on side with them and say, I feel your pain, you can get through this. You know, that's so difficult to do, isn't it? Oh, it really tough. is. Uh, what about personal tragedy? I mean, should we be teaching mm. them to deal with things like a breakup or the loss of a relative or a friend? To me, that's a little bit different because I think with failing exams and, you know, losing a friend and all the rest of it, there's part of that that you have some control over, particularly with exams or, mm. you know, not meeting a deadline. Yeah. You have a sense of having some control over that. When somebody dies, when a, when a marriage falls apart and you're a child in that family, there's a sense of being out of control and not having control, and that is very scary. But I think, again, as parents, we need to equip our children with the strategies, the techniques, the tools that help them through that. I think as a parent, you, spend, you, you need to spend a bit of time listening to your child, just allowing them to say what they want yeah. to say and just being there. I think often parents make the mistake of talking to and at kids and not actually stepping back and just allowing the children to have a bit of a I think you're right. It's a tough, mm. it's a tough job, this parenting stuff, isn't it? So how can we, can you reassure us that they're going to be okay, John? I <laughs> wish I could, but of course, as we know, some of the stuff that happens in childhood can have uh, long-time mm -hmm. consequences. The, the good thing to know is it's amazing what kids can go through if there's a big person prepared to step into their world and take it seriously. Sometimes that's usually the parent, but it can also be a grandparent. And if there's, say, family strife going on, grandparents can have a wonderful role stepping in and just going through this with them. Excellent. Fantastic advice. As always, Sarah and John, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.